Chapter 1 The Village by the Forest You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 The Village by the Forest Second Fool opened his eyes and stared at the mud and thatch roof over his head. The quilt covering his body was a deep yellow color and had a musty smell. It was so old that its original color could no longer be distinguished. Next to him lay his second brother, Han Zhu, who appeared to be in a deep slumber. Snores intermittently floated over as he slept. Five feet from the bed was an earthen wall that had suffered from numerous cracks due to the passage of time. From the other side of the wall came the nagging voice of his mother and the occasional deep breathing of his father who was smoking his pipe. Second fool slowly closed his eyes, trying to force himself to sleep. He knew that if he didn't go to sleep now, he wouldn't be able to wake up early the next day. If he woke up late, he would not be able to go up to the mountains with his good friends to gather firewood. Second fool's real name was Han Li. This elegant name was not given to him by his parents. When he was born, his parents had offered two pieces of cornbread to the village's elder Zhang in exchange for giving the baby Han Li a second name. T.L. Second fool, Beleng Zi, in Mandarin has a pleasing sound despite its meaning, when Uncle Zhang was young, he had attended school with the wealthy children in the city. As he was the only one in the village who knew how to read a few words, more than half of the children in the village were named by him. Han Li was called Second Fool by those in the village. Despite his name, he wasn't stupid looking or foolish. On the contrary, he was actually the smartest person in the village. But just like the other children, aside from when they were home, nobody called him by his official name, Han Li. Instead, they called him by his pet name, Second Fool. The reason why he was nicknamed Second Fool was due to the fact that there was already someone named Fool in the village. This type of nickname was nothing. There were children in the village named Doggy and Dumb Egg. These names weren't nearly as pleasant thought sounding as Second Fool. Because of this, Hanley felt some consolation even though he was not very fond of his nickname. Physically, Han Li was very ordinary. He was tan and matched the generic descriptions of a child born in a farming community. Deep in his heart however, he had matured faster than others of the same age. Ever since he was young, he had yearned that one day, he would be able to leave his small village and explore the fertile lands of the outside world that Uncle Zhang had always talked about. Han Li had never dared to speak of his dreams to anyone else in the village because they would be deeply shocked. After all, leaving this place was a notion that even adults didn't easily think about, let alone a small child. Children around his age only knew how to chase chickens and pet dogs. They had never entertained the strange notion of leaving the village. Han Li's family had a total of seven members, including two older brothers, one older sister and one younger sister. He was the fourth eldest in his family and turned ten this year. Together, they lived a hard yet honest lifestyle. Very rarely did they get to eat meat and fish, but the entire family was content with living with the meager resources they had. At this moment, Han Li was hovering between the state of sleep and consciousness. As he slowly drifted to sleep, only one thought was on his mind. While in the mountains, he had to pick more red berries for his younger sister whom he doted on the most. The next morning, at noon, Han Li was shielding himself from the scorching sun overhead in the shade casted by the pile of lumber on his back. Wrapped around his chest was a pouch filled to the brim with red berries that bounced with each step as he walked home. He had no idea that at this moment, there was a guest in his home, a guest that that would change his destiny forever. This guest was actually someone who had very close blood ties with Han Li. It was his third uncle. It was rumored that his third uncle was the shopkeeper of a restaurant in the nearby city. According to his parents, third uncle was the most capable within their family. After a few hundred years, the Han family had finally produced someone like his third uncle, a figure with status and respect that was unrivaled within the family. When Han Li was young, he had only met his third uncle a few times. Han Li's older brother became a blacksmith's apprentice in the city thanks to third uncle's introduction. Every so often, 
this third uncle would even gift some food to his parents to bring home and eat. Because he had looked after Han Li's family with great consideration, Han Li had a very good impression of him. Even though his parents never said anything, he knew that in their hearts, they were very grateful. Han Li's eldest brother was the family's pride and joy. As an apprentice of a blacksmith, he was able to bring home 30 copper coins every month, minus living expenses. And when he finally graduated from his apprenticeship, he would earn even more money. Every time his parents talked about their eldest son, their spirits would soar with pride. Although Han Li was young, he was tremendously envious. The best work he could find was to be the apprentice of a craft master and rely on the crafts he made to earn money. So when Han Li saw the brand new satin robes and the round face that belonged to his third uncle, Han Li was overjoyed. Setting down the firewood in a corner outside of the house, he went to the front of the house to greet his third uncle. Third uncle, Han Li greets you. After doing so, he obediently stood by the side and listened to his third uncle chat with his parents. Third uncle beamed at Han Li as he opened his mouth, praising his nephew. What a sensible child! After complimenting Han Li, he turned his attention back to Han Li's parents and explained the reason for his visit. Although Han Li wasn't able to fully understand the words his third uncle was saying as he was too young, he still roughly understood what he said. It turned out his third uncle's restaurant had the backing of the Seven Mysteries sect. This sect was divided into the inner and outer divisions. Not too long ago, third uncle had been officially recognized as an outer disciple. That meant that he could bring a child between the ages of 7 and 12 to take the inner disciple examinations. Once every five years, the Seven Mysteries sect would formally issue invitations for youngsters to take the test to become inner disciples. The test would officially begin the following month. Third uncle was a smart and astute man who was childless, so he naturally thought of Han Li who met the age requirement. The moment the usually docile father Han heard the words Jiang Hu and sect, along with many other phrases he had never heard before, he felt very hesitant. Bringing his smoking pipe to his lips and giving it a puff, he sat down without saying a word. TL Father Han, is the title of Han Li's father, according to Third Uncle, the Seven Mysteries sect could be considered one of the best sects within several hundred miles. If one were to become an inner disciple, not only would one be able to practice martial arts for free, one would also receive a monthly allowance and have his needs taken care of. Not only that, those who didn't pass the inner disciple examinations could still enter the sect's outer division and become an outer disciple like Third Uncle. They would still have the opportunity to help the Seven Mysteries sect handle its external affairs. Upon hearing the possibility that his son could receive a monthly allowance and even become as successful as his third uncle, Han Li's father finally decided to give his approval. After getting the approval from Han Li's father, third uncle felt elation in his heart. Leaving behind two silver coins, he said that he would return in a month to escort Han Li to the testing area. During this period of time, Han Li's father had to ensure that Han Li was clothed and well fed to improve his constitution so that it would be easier for Han Li to pass the test. After giving these instructions, third uncle bid farewell to Han Li and his father, patted Han Li on his head and left for the city. While Han Li didn't fully comprehend his third uncle's words, he could understand that he would be able to earn money in the big city. It seemed that his dream from before was going to come true making him so excited that he could not sleep for the first few nights. After one month had passed, third uncle returned to the village, escorting Han Li to the testing site. Before he left, Han Li's father repeatedly instructed Han Li on the ways of proper behavior. One must be honest, have the capacity to endure, and avoid unnecessary conflicts with others. Meanwhile, Han Li's mother urged him to take care of his health and to eat and sleep well. The day finally arrived and third uncle came to take Han Li away by carriage. As his parents gradually disappeared from his sight, Han Li bit down on his lips in order to prevent his tears from flowing down his eyes. Although he had always been more mature than other children of the same age, he was still a ten-year-old child. This was the first time he had left home, 
so he naturally felt depressed. A homesickness developed in his heart. He was determined to rush home after he struck rich, never to be separated from his parents. Hanley would never have thought that from this moment on, money would lose any meaning to him. He was unexpectedly going to walk a path different from ordinary mortals. Instead, he was going to walk down his own path towards immortal cultivation. Chapter 2 Green Ox Village You are listening at NovelFull.audio Han Lee's home was said to be a small city, but it was actually just a large village called Green Ox Village. Only those who lived in the mountainous region and the natives with no knowledge of the outside world called the village Green Ox City. The only reason why Han Lee knew about this was because he had been informed by his uncle Zhang, who had been working as a gatekeeper for more than 10 years. Green Ox Village wasn't very large. It only had one main road, known as Green Ox Street, which spanned from the eastern to the western borders of the village. There was also only one tavern in village, located on its western border. For any traveling merchant that didn't want to sleep outdoors, this tavern was the only option. Thought there was only one road for carriages in the western part of Green Ox Village. It ran from the gates of the village and the Green Ox Tavern all the way to the Spring Fragrance Restaurant, the only other place anyone would visit besides the tavern. Spring Fragrance Restaurant wasn't big by any means and was actually quite old-fashioned. However, this establishment had a certain charm that was appealing to many travelers. Every day at noon, there would always be a crowd of people, making the place constantly swamped. A bearded man with a round face emerged from a carriage along with a dark-skinned, rotund little boy who looked to be around ten years old. They both walked into the restaurant with a swagger. All of the regular customers knew who this man was. He was the manager of this restaurant, Fatty Han. The boy, however, was not someone they were familiar with. Elder Han, this tanned little boy resembles you a lot. Could it be a child from a prostitute you spent the night with, someone joked. The moment the joke was uttered, the entire restaurant roared with laughter. Ha! This is the son of my blood brother, my own nephew. Of course he'll look like me, Fatty Han said proudly instead of being angered. This duo had traveled for three whole days without rest before arriving at the village. They were Han Lee and his third uncle, who was known as Fatty Han by the village's people. Fatty Han greeted a few regulars before bringing Han Lee to the back of the restaurant and entered a remote courtyard. Xiao Li, you should rest here for a while. When the time comes for the inner disciple examinations, I'll call you. For now, I must leave in order to attend to a few regulars. Fatty Han pointed at a side room in the courtyard and kindly motioned for Han Li to enter it. TL. Xiao, in this context means, little, after saying that, Han Li's third uncle turned around and hurried back inside the restaurant to tend to his customers. As he reached the door, he felt a sudden unease in his heart and reminded Han Li, don't run about. You might get lost in the village if you wander around. So it's best if you don't leave this courtyard. N. Hearing Han Li's honest response, he nodded in relief and walked out the door. After his third uncle left the courtyard, Han Li suddenly felt exhausted. The moment his head landed on his pillow, he fell into a deep sleep and began snoring, surprisingly without the fear of a normal kid staying alone in unfamiliar surroundings. When the night came, a servant came by with some food. Although it wasn't a lavish meal, it was still delicious. After Han Li ate the food, the servant was clearing away the remaining dishes when his third uncle leisurely walked in. How was it? Was the meal suitable to your taste? Do you miss home? Yes, I miss home. Han Li replied in his childish voice. Third uncle seemed satisfied with Han Li's response. He began to talk to him about his daily life and bragged about many of his experiences. Gradually, Han Li became less shy and started to laugh and talk with his third uncle. In this manner, two days quickly passed. On the third day, after Han Li finished dinner, he was waiting for his uncle's stories of Jiang Hu when a carriage stopped in front of the restaurant door. T.L. Jiang Hu, 
World of Martial Artists, this carriage was painted a shiny black color and even the horse was a rarely seen golden steed. But what attracted the most attention was that on the frame of the carriage was the word mystery written in silver characters in the middle of a red triangle emblazing a black banner. The image on the banner also emitted an unfathomable air. Seeing this banner, every martial arts expert in the area knew that this carriage belonged to one of the two local overlords in the area, the Seven Mysteries sect. It seemed that an esteemed guest had arrived in Green Ox Village. The Seven Mysteries sect was previously known as the Seven Supreme Sect. Two hundred years ago, the sect was established by an extremely famous martial master named Sovereign of the Seven Supreme. Having once swept across and dominated the Jing province and the nearby Shu province for a few decades, the Sovereign of the Seven Supreme was resoundingly famous. But after he was afflicted with illness, the power of the Seven Mysteries sect took a devastating hit and its influence dropped drastically. In the end, the Seven Mysteries sect was forced out of the main city of the Jing province by the combined efforts of its rival sections a hundred years ago, the sect was forced to relocate to an extremely remote area called the Celestial Rainbow Mountain. From then on, they rebuilt their roots in that third-rate region and became a local powerhouse. Locally, the only other power that could rival the Seven Mysteries sect was the Feral Wolf Gang. The Feral Wolf Gang was originally a gang of horse stop mounted bandits from the Jing province that had no qualms about burning, killing, looting and pillaging. After a while, an army dispatched by the imperial court encircled and fiercely suppressed the bandits. Some of the bandits accepted the amnesty granted to them by the imperial court while the remaining bandits reformed themselves into the Feral Wolf Gang. The Feral Wolf Gang was exceedingly cruel and bloodthirsty, retaining their former characteristics of having no qualms about committing atrocities. Thus, whenever they clashed, the Seven Mysteries sect was always at a disadvantage. Even though the Feral Wolf Gang controlled more villages than the Seven Mysteries sect, the gang didn't know how to manage the villages effectively to run businesses and generate income. In comparison, the wealth of the villages controlled by the Seven Mysteries sect vastly outstripped the villages under Feral Wolf Gang's control. Jealous of the Seven Mysteries sect's prosperity, the Feral Wolf Gang made plans to take over the sect's territory, resulting in the long-standing conflict between the two major powers. The conflict gave the current sect leader of the Seven Mysteries sect endless headaches. Because of the Feral Wolf Gang, the Seven Mysteries sect have been accepting an increasing number of disciples in recent years. After the carriage stopped, a skinny 40-year-old man jumped down. His movements were extremely nimble, indicating that he was a powerful expert. He seemed to be very familiar with Fatty Han's restaurant and walked pompously towards the room Han Lee was residing in. Upon seeing the 40-year-old man, Fatty Han immediately greeted him respectfully. Protector Wang, why has an esteemed person such as yourself personally made the trip? Humph. Protector Wang coldly snorted. The roads here haven't been peaceful lately. Because of this, there's a need to strengthen the defenses. Thus, the elders ordered that I personally come. Don't speak any more rubbish. Is this the child you wanted to nominate? Yes, yes, this is my nephew. I hope that Protector Wang will take care of him. Looking at the impatient look on Protector Wang face, Third Uncle immediately retrieved a heavy dot-looking pouch and secretly passed it over to Protector Wang. After he assessed the weight of the pouch, Protector Wang's impatient demeanor visibly relaxed. Fatty Han, you truly know how to conduct yourself. On the way back, I will make sure that all of your nephew's needs are well cared for. Anyways, it is getting pretty late now. We had best hurry on our way. Chapter 3 Seven Mysteries Sect You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Seven Mysteries Sect The smell inside the carriage was unpleasant, but this could hardly be surprising. The optimal capacity for this carriage was only ten people, but currently there were about thirty young children squeezed into the carriage. Even if young children had smaller bodies than adults, the space inside the carriage was intolerably cramped. 
The clever Hanley had chosen a seat near to the sides when he had first entered the carriage and was now stealthily observing the other children. The children who had registered or been nominated to take the test at the Seven Mysteries sect could be segregated into three different groups based on their clothing and bearing. In the first group, there was a youth wearing silk clothing seated in the center of the carriage, surrounded by the majority of the children. This youth's name was Wu Yen. He was 13 years old, one of the oldest children to be seated inside the carriage. Normally, he would not be even here since his age had already exceeded the age limit, but one of his older female cousins was married to someone of authority inside the Seven Mysteries sect. Therefore, Wu Yan's age was purposely overlooked and he was allowed to join the selection. Wu Yan's family ran a martial arts dojo, so he had access to a considerable amount of wealth. From a young age, he had practiced external martial arts. Even though his talent could not be considered excellent, when facing against Han Li's type, those children who had never practiced martial arts before, it was more than enough for Wu Yan to trample them underfoot. It was very clear that children like Wu Yen, who came from powerful wealthy families and had previously practiced martial arts, could be considered the elite within the group of children inside the carriage. They were from different backgrounds. Some came from the families of shopkeepers, some came from the families of workers, or families of craftsmen, etc. However, they all had one special thing in common, they grew up in the city. Thus, from an early age, they had learned from the elders of their families on how to observe people and know what was beneficial for them. Because of this, these people surrounded Wu Yan and repeatedly called out, Young Master Wu, and, Big Brother Wu, to curry favor. Wu Yan seemed to be used to being fawned over. The third group of people were people like Han Li, this group came from remote and poor villages. They usually made do with what they had, were poor, and had suffered a life of hardship and strife. Only five to six people belonged to this third group, creating a minority inside the carriage. They usually kept to themselves, and had a quiet demeanor, not even daring to speak or laugh loudly. They were a refreshing change when compared to those loud children. After the horse carriage exited Green Ox Town, it sped westward and made a few detours to visit other locations and collect even more children. On the fifth day, they managed to arrive at the Celestial Rainbow Mountain, the home of the Seven Mysteries sect, near sundown. The first thing the children saw after exiting the carriage was the beautiful, captivating sunset. It was only when Protector Wang started to rally the children that they woke up from their days and continued proceeding forward. Celestial Rainbow Mountain was originally setting Wind Mountain. Legend has it that during ancient times, a five-dot colored wind blew past this location, instantly transforming the mountain. After this place was discovered by humans, they realized how beautiful the sunset looked behind the rosy pink clouds. Inspired by the majestic image, the humans decided to rename this place Celestial Rainbow Mountain. The Celestial Rainbow Mountain was the second largest mountain in the Jing province after the Bai Mang Mountain. It was extremely spacious, spanning a radius of 10 li. The Celestial Rainbow Mountain was actually a mountain range consisting of 10 mountain peaks, each of them being incredibly dangerous, and under the control of the various divisions of the Seven Mysteries sect. The main mountain peak of the Celestial Rainbow Mountain was named the Setting Sun Summit, it was treacherous and dangerous beyond comparison. Not only was it extremely steep, there was only a single path between the peak and base of the mountain. After the Seven Mysteries sect rebuilt their roots in this area, they set up a total of 13 checkpoints on the path up the mountain. Some of these checkpoints were hidden while others were out in the open. They were prepared for every single route that the feral wolf gang might use to invade the mountain. As Han Li followed the escorts in front of the group, he surveyed his nearby surroundings. Suddenly, the escort stopped as waves of friendly and amicable voices rang out. Little brother Wang, why did you arrive so late? You're two days late. Division head you, we were delayed by the journey here, sorry for causing you to worry. Standing in front of all the children, Protector Wang replied respectfully as he bowed to a red-dot-faced old man. Protector Wang's stern facade was instantly replaced by a look of fawning. 
Which batch of children is this? This is the batch number 17. N. This division head you pompously looked towards Hanley and the other children. Send them to the courtyard, let them rest for tonight. Tomorrow morning, we'll begin the selection process. Send those who fail or break the rules back down the mountain, dot, understood, division head you. Walking atop of the mountain stone steps, the children were tremendously excited, but no one dared to speak loudly. Despite their young age, the children somehow knew that this place would determine their destiny. Protector Wong was in the lead and greeted several figures on the way to the children's sleeping quarters. It could be seen that he was familiar with a lot of people and was quite popular in the region. The majority of the people they met on their way were all wearing green clothes and equipped with a blade or sword. Even those that appeared empty dot handed wore pouches full of mysterious items around their waists. From their bearing and conduct, one could tell that all of these people were somewhat proficient at martial arts. Hanli and the rest of the children were brought to a mountain peak that seemed lower in height in comparison to the other mountain peaks. On the summit, there was a house made of mud, built for the children to sleep in during the night. As he slept, Hanli dreamed that he was wearing silk, had a golden sword in his hands, and possessed peerless martial arts, soundly beating the village blacksmith's sons who he previously were no match for. Then he woke on second morning, still reminiscent of his dream. Protector Wang did not let the children enjoy breakfast. Instead, he brought all of the children down the mountain to a steep slope containing many bamboo shoots. There, Division Head Yu and a few other youths whom Han Li didn't recognize were already waiting for them. Chapter 4 Bone Refining Cliff You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Bone Refining Cliff In Front of the Children, Division Head You Hollered, Everyone, Listen Well. Inside the bamboo forest, there's a small path on which you'll proceed forward where you will eventually reach the bone refining cliff of the Seven Mysteries sect. The first area of the path will be the bamboo forest. The second area will be a rocky slope region. The last area will be the cliff. Only those who have managed to climb the bone refining cliff by noon will be disciples of our Seven Mysteries sect. If you finish after noon, although you won't become an inner disciple, you can still become an unofficial disciple as long as your performance demonstrates remarkable prowess. Hanli naturally did not understand what it meant to be an unofficial disciple. He only knew that all he had to do was to climb the cliff. Casting his gaze forward at the uneven, steep slope, he saw many lengthy bamboo shoots sprawled across the surface of the cliff. Seeing this, it seemed that the first obstacle should be pretty easy. Studying the other children, Hanli was unwilling to lose to those in his age group. The atmosphere quickly became tense for the other children as well. Division head you cast a glance at the rising sun and said, Okay, it's almost time, prepare to set off. Don't be afraid, your seniors will be protecting you from behind in case there's any danger. Hanli turned his head and glanced at those unrecognizable youths. These people were the senior disciples, so they should be from an earlier batch. Hanli could not help but think, how impressive, if I managed to join them, could I wear the same robes of an inner disciple. As he was blindly pondering, Hanli discovered that the other children had already rushed into the bamboo forest. Seeing that he was left behind, Hanli quickly started moving forward. Once the thirty children rushed in, they stopped moving as a group and scattered within the spacious bamboo forest. Behind Hanli was a lanky senior disciple with a cold look on his face, silently following Hanli. Hanli was a bit fearful, but he did not dare to start a conversation and waste time. Slightly intimidated, he lowered his body and proceeded to tread on the steep slope. This stretch of bamboo forest looked ordinary on the outside, but after Hanli walked for a distance, he found that it was slowly becoming more and more difficult to move forward. His footsteps got heavier, and gradually, Hanli began to use one hand to pull the bamboo shoots, using the momentum of the bamboo springing back to its original position to propel him forward. Hanli persisted in this manner for quite some time, at a certain point, he became extremely exhausted, so he had no choice but to find an empty space to sit down and rest, his breath leaving him in heavy bursts of air. 
After taking a breather, Han Li turned his gaze and saw the lanky senior behind him. Although the ground was very steep, this senior disciple was standing nonchalantly on the ground as if this was nothing to him. His body was totally devoid of dirt, standing erect like the bamboo shoots nearby, while he silently looked at Han Li in the distance. Looking at the cold glance of this senior, Han Li felt fear in his heart and rapidly turned his head back. He also heard sounds of heavy breathing in front and deduced that one of the faster children was also making use of this opportunity to rest. After a short break, Han Li swiftly resumed his journey. The slope was perilously steep, and Han Li's energy reserve got smaller and smaller. He decided to lie flat on the ground and claw his way forward instead of walking on his legs, such that if he exhausted his energy, he would not fall flat on his face. Luckily, his clothes were made of strong materials, if not, his limbs and knees might have been damaged by being dragged across the rocky ground. As he almost reached the end of the bamboo forest, Han Li felt that it was very tough to complete the last few steps. This was because as the stones and rocks on the ground increased, the number of bamboo shoots decreased. Han Li finally reached the point where there were no more bamboo shoots for him to use for support. Han Li slowly moved inch by inch past this last stretch of road and overcame the first obstacle. The moment he walked out of the bamboo forest, he could only see a vast expanse of land. In front of him was an incomparably huge, rocky mountain. On top of the gargantuan mountain were a few skinny kids, slowly climbing up the stone cliff along with a few senior disciples keeping a close watch on them. Han Li did not dare to hesitate any longer and rushed to make his way to the front of the huge rocky mountain. The mountain consisted of layers and layers of sedimentary rocks stacked upon each other and appeared very eroded. In some places, the ground crumbled when touched. Of course, there were also solid slabs of broken stone, but finding them was extremely perilous as they would lead to injury. Han Li had only practiced the most rudimentary of martial arts and as such, his hands were already filled with injuries after his trek through the bamboo forest. At the same time, his clothes were torn and tattered around his knees, and the flesh and muscles hidden by his clothing were also scraped and injured. Although the wound on his knee was small, Han Li gritted his teeth every time it came into contact with the jagged rocks, the pain almost more than he could bear. The few children in the lead had already climbed the furthest. Seeing the others ahead of him, Han Li refused to give up. The moment any thoughts of giving up flashed past his mind, images of his third uncle and his family would appear, giving him the motivation to carry on. With the memories of those he loved urging him to continue, Han Li relentlessly proceeded forward. Before Han Li left for the inner disciple examination, Han Li's father and third uncle reminded Han Li that the test would be extremely tough. If he did not persevere to the end, Han Li would have no chances of joining the Seven Mysteries sect. At this moment, Han Li no longer cared about joining the sect. Instead, the only source of motivation pushing him forward was an unwillingness to give in and the urgency to catch up to the others in the lead. Han Li raised his head and noticed that Wu Yen was currently in the lead. Wu Yen was older than Han Li and had even practiced martial arts, unsurprisingly, he had a stronger body compared to the others. Once again, Han Li turned his gaze backwards and saw that he had surpassed quite a few children, many of which were still rushing forward. Sucking in a deep breath, Han Li increased the speed of his ascent. Despite exhausting the majority of his strength, he still hadn't shortened the distance between him and those in the lead. As the unyielding sun climbed towards the center of the sky, Han Li's body got heavier and heavier, making it harder for him to reach the summit. In the meantime, Wu Yan had already reached the top of the huge mountain. Near the summit of the 100.meter.tall mountain was the incredibly steep bone refining cliff. Over ten ropes, each with knots the size of a fist, hung from the top of the cliff. Wu Yan selected one and began to climb up the cliff. Han Li gazed over at Wu Yan, who was in the lead, and felt resigned in his heart. He knew that he could not catch up to those in front in the short amount of time left until noon. The notion of failing was quickly erased by the sudden pain that flared up from his injuries. The waves of fiery pain sapped the strength from his limbs. 
Feeling his body fall downward, Han Li frantically grasped a stone with one hand. His heart was beating erratically as he rapidly pasted his body onto the side of the mountain, not daring to make any sudden motions. After a moment, he calmed down, using his hand to test the strength of the stone slab. Only after he determined it was secured in place did he manage to let go of his worries. Looking downwards, Han Li saw that the lanky senior was in a half-dot squatting position with his arms extended out, preparing to catch Han Li if he fell. Seeing that Han Li was safe, however, the senior retracted his arms. Han Li felt relief in his heart. If he really fell down the cliff, all of his efforts would have been wasted. After a short moment, he slowly inched forward and crawled towards the remaining ropes hanging down the bone refining cliff. Finally, he arrived at the bottom of a rope. The sun had almost reached the center of the sky, indicating that there was only one hour before the time limit was up. At this moment, Wu Yan had already ascended the cliff and he turned his head to gaze at the remaining children. Just as Han Li was climbing the rope, his gaze coincidentally met Wu Yan, only to see him giving a thumbs-down gesture to the slower competitors. After laughing maniacally, Wu Yan continued onward. With anger rising in his heart, Han Li grabbed a hold of the rope and began to climb. However, Han Li had long since used up all his energy. Currently, even holding the rope tightly was a challenge for him, let alone climbing the rope. Miraculously, Han Li climbed up to the first knot on his rope. Sitting on it, he felt as if his body had turned into cotton, unable to move a single finger. He turned his head and looked at all the children behind him. Some of them had already given up, sitting down on the stone mountain and breathing heavily. Like Han Li, they had exhausted all of their strength and were on the verge of collapse. Han Li could only bitterly smile, he had greatly underestimated this test. Fortunately, he wasn't among the last of the children. After looking at the senior disciples' cold gazes, he decided to carry on. Even though he had no chances of completing the test before noon, finishing late was better than hanging limp on a rope. Han Li extended both of his stiff hands and used the strength he had recovered during his break to slowly climb up the rope. But at this moment, Han Li's hands stopped responding to his will, he even lacked the strength to maintain a grip on the rope. Han Li paused there and lingered for a moment before reluctantly deciding to remain there seated on the knot. Chapter 5 Dr. Mo You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 5 Dr. Mo After a brief moment, Han Li felt a tightening sensation on his waist as his body grew light. His body was suddenly lifted upwards. Turning his head, Han Li saw the lanky senior helping him ascend the cliff. With one hand around Han Li's waist, the senior disciple climbed up the cliff with nimble legs. Han Li could not help but notice that the sun had already reached the center of the skies. It was noon. So I failed the test after all. Han Li felt depression set in his heart. It seemed unfair. Even though he had desperately pushed forward, almost to the point of disregarding his life, why couldn't he compare to the other children? In an instant, the bone refining cliff appeared before him. There were six other children resting on top of the cliff. Out of the six, only Wu Yen had the strength to have a conversation with a middle dot aged old man wearing a dark blue garb. Division Head Yu as well as Protector Wang were also standing near him. They were waiting for the senior disciples to escort the rest of the children up the bone refining cliff. After all the children had been escorted up the cliff, Division Head Yu stepped forward with a solemn expression on his face as he began to address the kids. This time round, only seven of you passed. Out of this group, six will enter my Bai Duan division and formally become our sex inner disciples. Division Head Yu spoke slowly at the crowd of children. As for Wu Yan, the first disciple to reach the top of the bone refining cliff, he performed outstandingly and, as such, will be directly sent to the Seven Supreme Division to learn the sex secret skills and martial arts. After speaking, Division Head Yu glanced at the old man wearing the dark blue garb. The old man twirled his beard around one hand while nodding in satisfaction at Division Head Yu. As for the others, 
the vision had you contemplated the outcome of the remaining children for a moment before rubbing his chin and saying softly. Zhang Tai and Han Li, although these two did not pass the test, they still performed admirably. Their determination will allow them to cope with the pain of practicing martial arts. The two of you will be unofficial disciples assigned to an instructor of our sect for the next half year. After half a year, you will be tested again. If you pass, you'll be able to become inner disciples, but if you fail, you will be sent to join the outer disciples, helping the sect handle its external affairs. Han Li stole a glance at the person named Zhang Tai. Like Han Li, Zhang Tai had begun climbing the rope but failed to reach the summit of the bone refining cliff before midday. Protector Wang, give the rest of the children some silver coins and send them back to their homes, said Division Head Yu as he gave a cold stare at the children who failed the exam. Understood. Protector Wang complied with the order and he led the remainder of the children back down the cliff. Zhang Jun, Wu Ming Rui, the two of you will assist me in sending the rest of these children to the Vice Division Head and Instructor Li. Two senior disciples stepped forward and separated Han Li and the rest into two groups before leading them down the cliff. One of the senior disciples was the lanky senior that had always been behind Han Li. As they were descending the cliff, Han Li could not help but steal a glance at Wu Yan and discovered that he was still chatting with the old man in a dark blue robe, seemingly without any intent of moving from the spot. He's different from the rest of you. In the future, he will most likely be a core disciple. Only core disciples are sent to the Seven Supreme Division to train in the sect's secret arts. Once he completes his training, at the very least, he will have the rank of a protector. The voice belonged to the long and thin face, who could tell what Han Li was thinking. From his tone, Han Li could hear undisguised hints of envy mixing with jealousy. Umph, isn't Wu Yan just pulling strings and depending on his family's connections? If it wasn't for his older cousin being married to sect leader Ma, how could he be selected as a core disciple with such meager skill? He already surpassed the age limit but he was still sent to the Seven Supreme Division, the senior said in a freezing tone that was comparable to a cold wind on a winter day. Zhang Jun, have you gone mad? How dare you gossip about the sect leader's decisions? If this news was spread, both of us could suffer from cruel punishments and end up in dire straits. After hearing Zhang Jun's words, the other senior with the long and thin face felt shock in his heart and rapidly checked his surroundings to make sure no one heard Zhang Jun. Only after discovering that there were no other disciples did he heave a sigh of relief. The senior with the cold countenance snorted as if he were harboring hatred in his heart, but after Wu Ming Rui's warning, he stopped talking. Only then did Han Li understand that the senior with the cold countenance was Zhang Jun listening to their conversation, Han Li could roughly understand what they were talking about. Wu Yan entered the Seven Supreme Division, not because of his own skills, but because he had the backing of the sect leader. As they walked along the mountain path, these two seniors both thought of the sect's internal affairs, which filled them with sadness. Lacking the mood to converse, they silently led the children forward. The rest of the children also dared not speak out of turn, perhaps they were thinking of the differences between the Seven Mysteries sect and their hometowns. Just as they were passing through a forested region, a sixty-year-old man emerged from the woods. He was tall and thin with a yellow tinge to his skin and a head full of white hair. As he approached them, he coughed with every step, causing many of them to worry that he was suffering a great deal and could collapse at any moment. L.O. The senior disciples, upon seeing this old man, did not show a trace of worry on their faces. Instead, they respectfully greeted the old man with a bow. Dr. M.O., this disciple greets you. Is there anything that you need this disciple to handle? Zhang Jun, unlike his previously cold demeanor, now had an expression full of respect. To Zhang Jun, this old man in front of him was worthy of more respect than division head and even the sect leader. Oh, is this the latest batch of disciples? The old man continued coughing and asked with a hoarse voice. Yes, among the eight of them, six are official inner disciples and two are unofficial disciples, responded Zhang Jun. Coincidentally, 
I'm currently in need of some manpower, specifically an alchemy apprentice and an herb gatherer. Let these two follow me instead. Dr. Mo randomly raised his finger and pointed, just as luck would have it, towards Han Li and Zhang Tai, the two unofficial disciples. This disciple will obey your words. These two unofficial disciples actually caught eyes of the esteemed Dr. Mo, their karma must be exceptional, the two of you, why are you still standing there? Hurry and come to pay your respects to Dr. Mo. If you are able to learn a thing or two about the arts of healing from this esteemed elder, you will be extremely fortunate. The two seniors had no traces of hesitation or objection on their face. The senior with the long and thin face, Wu Ming Rui, flattered Dr. Mo in order to curry favor with him. Han Li and Zhang Tai, upon seeing the two senior disciples' sudden change of heart, had no objections. They could only accept in silence and follow the old man into the forest. Dr. Mo led the two of them down a small path that meandered through the forest. The path turned east and west before suddenly stopping in front of an entrance leading to a luscious green valley. On the left side of the valley was a courtyard used for farming medicinal herbs that emitted a fragrant smell into the air. After they entered the courtyard, Han Li spotted many herbs that were unknown to him. On the right side of the valley were lines of houses in various sizes. Looking in all four directions, Han Li saw no exit besides the gateway from which they entered. This valley is called the God Hand Valley. Other disciples will not dare enter this valley unless they are suffering from injuries. The old man stood in the middle of the line of houses and pointed to a smaller house. For now, this will be your home. Rest and replenish your energy. When night falls, look for me in my house so I can inform you about several things. The two of you can call me Old Mo. The old man huffed and considered for a moment before saying. Dr. Mo is also acceptable. After speaking, Dr. Mo ignored the two of them and slowly walked towards an impressive looking house, coughing with each step. Completely exhausted, Han Li did not bother to check with Zhang Tai before entering the house and selecting a bed to fall asleep on. He was satisfied, because, at this moment, he was halfway to becoming an inner disciple of the Seven Mysteries sect. Chapter 6 Nameless Oracular Formula You Are Listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Nameless Oracular Formula, Get Up, Get Up A barely audible sound came from above Hanli, rousing him from his deep slumber. As soon as he opened his eyes, a huge face appeared in front of him. In shock, Han Li pushed himself backwards. Only then was he able to see that the owner of the face that had frightened him to death was the boy named Zhang Tai. Hurry up and come eat something. After you've finished, we need to see old Mo. Zhang Tai passed some steaming white buns over to Han Li. Where did you find this food? Han Li stared blankly for a moment before accepting the buns. At a kitchen near the valley, I saw a ton of people eating food, so I also grabbed a portion. After I had finished, I realized that you hadn't eaten yet, so I grabbed two buns for you. Zhang Tai smiled sincerely at Han Li. Thank you very much, Brother Zhang. Han Li was somewhat touched. Seeing that Zhang Tai looked quite a bit older than himself, he couldn't help but blurt out the words, Brother Zhang, no that and no problem. I'm too used to labor. If I'm idle even for just a moment, I always feel a bit dot uncomfortable. If you ever need any help in the future, don't hesitate to tell me. I have nothing else but strength. Zhang Tai seemed to be somewhat embarrassed, as he began to stammer. Han Li hadn't eaten breakfast or lunch and was somewhat starved. In just a few bites, he devoured one bun. With just a bit more effort, both of the large buns completely disappeared into his stomach. It's getting late, we should go see old Mo. Han Li burped a few times and looked out the window towards the setting sun. After mentally calculating the time, he decided that it was probably about time to go see Dr. Mo. Zhang Tai didn't object, following Han Li to Dr. Mo's house. There were rows of bookshelves along all four walls of Dr. Mo's residence. These shelves were densely packed with various books. 
Old Mo. Old Mo. Dr. Mo's back was tightly pressed against his chair as he was currently engrossed in reading the book in his hands. He didn't seem to have noticed the two people's arrival, nor had he heard their greetings. The two of them were still children after all, so when they saw Dr. Mo ignore them, they were at a loss on what to do, unsure of what would be the best course of action. Thus, they could only stand to one side and wait. Finally, by the time Han Li's feet had begun to turn numb, Dr. Mo slowly placed his book down onto the table next to him. He coldly looked over at the two children and picked up his teacup to drink a few sips before slowly saying, From this day on, you two will be accepted as my unofficial disciples. I will teach you some general knowledge on picking medicinal plants and refining medicines. I may also teach you too some life.saving healing techniques. But I will absolutely not teach you any martial arts. Dr. Mo expressionlessly put down his teacup. I will teach you too a set of body and spiritual cultivation chants. Although it won't allow you to successfully subdue your enemy, it will strengthen your bodies. If you guys really want to learn some martial arts, you can go learn them from some other instructors. If you do so, I won't object, but I'll check your progression on this set of cultivation chants in half a year. If you don't meet the standard, I'll force you out to become an outer disciple. Do you too understand? Dr. Mo's tone suddenly became much more serious. It looked like he attached great importance to this set of chants. We understand. Han Li and Zhang Tai replied in unison. You two should leave now. Come back tomorrow morning. Dr. Mo waved his hands at the two of them, gesturing for them to go out. He then picked up his book and began reading it again. Before Han Li left, he couldn't help but glance back at the book in Dr. Mo's hands. It was a pity that he didn't know how to read, he could only tell that the title was made up of three large, black characters. Unfortunately, Han Li didn't recognize them. As soon as Han Li walked out of Dr. Mo's residence, Han Li couldn't help but let out the breath he had been holding. He didn't know why, but just now, he hadn't even dared to breathe in Dr. Mo's presence. His mind had also been incredibly tensed. Now that he had left, he immediately loosened up, returning to his normal state. During the following few days, Han Li's excitement never faded. He'd finally become a disciple of the Seven Mysteries sect. Although he was still just an unofficial disciple, it was still better than the children that had been sent home. Even if he didn't pass the test in half a year, he could still become an outer disciple like Third Uncle. In Han Li's opinion, Third Uncle was a person of great status and position, so he didn't concern himself over the examination in half a year. He even secretly hoped from the bottom of his heart that he wouldn't pass. That way, he could leave the mountain earlier to see his parents and his most beloved younger sister. During the following few days, Dr. Mo would teach them some medicinal knowledge in the mornings. In the afternoons, he would make them study the body's twelve main meridians, energy channels, and acupoint locations. As for the little he taught them of martial arts, he made them maintain the horse stance and hit straw dummies. A month later, the two of them were completely isolated from the other children. They no longer spent time learning anything else besides the chant. Ever since Dr. Mo had begun teaching them, they spent most of their time practicing the nameless chant. Dr. Mo strictly ordered them to not tell the chants to anyone else. If even a small segment was leaked, Dr. Mo would harshly punish them and kick them out of his apprenticeship. During this period of time, Hanli began to have a better understand of the Seven Mysteries sect and Dr. Mo. The Seven Mysteries sect had a disciple named Wang Lu, who possessed the teachings handed down by the Sovereign Seven Supreme. Wang Lu became the sect leader of the Seven Mysteries sect, and he split the sect with the help of the three other sect leaders. They divided the sect into two segments, the inner and outer branch. The outer branch had a total of four divisions, namely the Flying Bird Division, Treasure Gathering Division, Foreseas Division, and External Blade Division. The inner branch also had four divisions, namely the Hundred Forge Division, Seven Supreme Division, Consecrated Division, and Blood Blade Division. In addition to the inner and outer branch, 
there was a council of elders that reported to the vice sect leaders and the sect leader. Dr. M.O. was originally not a disciple of the Seven Mysteries sect. A few years ago, sect leader Wang carelessly fell into an enemy's trap while outside of the Celestial Rainbow Mountain and was heavily injured by the multiple attacks from the opposing party. As he wavered on the brink of death, his allies were unable to do anything about it. Just then, they happened to encounter Dr. M.O. whose brilliant healing and effective medicines saved sect leader Wang's life. Sect leader Wang naturally couldn't help but feel extremely grateful for Dr. M.O. He later found out that in addition to his profound medical expertise, Dr. M.O. was a strong martial arts practitioner, which convinced sect leader Wang to invite Dr. M.O. to join his sect. The elders carefully picked a small valley in the mountains to erect a residence specifically for Dr. Mo's use in order to make the shift as comfortable as possible. The valley soon became a venerated place within the Seven Mysteries sect thanks to Dr. Mo. Although none of the disciples had ever witnessed his skills, nor did they know how strong his martial arts was, Dr. Mo had used his brilliant medical expertise to save quite a few disciples' lives. Thus, although he was normally expressionless and was a man of few words, he received a great amount of respect from the inner disciples. Chapter 7 The Difficulties of Cultivating You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 The Difficulties of Cultivating Han Li slowly transferred energy from his meridians back to his Dantian. He had managed to reach the seventh cycle of Qi circulation today and Han Li knew that his body had already reached the limit of what it could handle. If he were to try to do another cycle, all his meridians would completely rupture, inciting a pain worse than death. Even though he was a courageous person, Han Li couldn't help but break out in cold sweat at the thought of this pain. It had already been half a year since Han Li joined the sect, and the official unofficial disciple exam had ended slightly over two months ago. Only a small portion of the unofficial disciples were officially promoted to the inner branch. Most unofficial disciples weren't able to pass this point and had no other choice but to pack their belongings and become a disciple of the outer branch. The children that didn't pass would generally enter the treasure gathering division or the flying bird division. For those that showed outstanding performances, they would receive another step further in their training and would then have the chance to join the more respected external blade division. Of course, it was only natural that the Four Seas Division was the most respected of the four divisions, but unfortunately, they only accepted those that made names for themselves through their martial arts. If one didn't have a certain level of expertise in martial arts, it was pointless for them to even dream about joining the Four Seas Division, these immature and inexperienced children were even less worthy of any mention. When Han Li recalled the details of the examination from two months ago, he couldn't help but feel a bit frightened. A few dozen miles away from the celestial rainbow mountains was a neighboring desolate mountain where a group of people were sparring. There were a few senior disciples who excelled in martial arts and were fiercely locked in combat. With each and every test, Han Li couldn't help but feel a little bit of joy at the misery of others. During their entire stay at the Seven Mysteries sect, Han Li and Zhang Tai had never taken such a terrifying test before. Dr. Mo had said that his examination would only test them on the cultivation chant, but Han Li didn't believe the test would be as easy as it sounded. Looking back, Han Li could clearly remember the intense effort he had to put into his cultivation. According to Dr. Mo, this oracular chant was only a single part of a set. Within half a year, Han Li and Zhang Tai had successfully comprehended the first layer of the cultivation chant, which Dr. Mo would be examining. If the two were able to overcome Dr. Mo's expectations, then they could become Dr. Mo's personal disciples and even share the same benefits as the inner disciples. Not to mention, Han Li had also heard from others that the treatment the inner disciples and outer disciples received was so vastly different that it spoke volumes of how enormous of a difference there was between the two. He then realized how ignorant he had been and cast away any thoughts of becoming an inner disciple. Han Li would be satisfied by just joining the Seven Mysteries sect and receiving some silver to send back to his family. Everything else had seemed irrelevant because, above all else, he truly desired to help his poverty-stricken family. 
His only goal was to be able to take money home so he could provide his family with a better life. After learning Dr. Mo's chant, Hanley had not once stopped cultivating. He spent every possible moment of day and night relentlessly practicing the chant. Because Dr. Mo hadn't given them any pointers on how to cultivate, Hanley could only theorize by himself. After discussing with other young cultivators, he discovered they were using the Seven Mysteries Sex Positive Yang Energy, a self. Meditated Cultivation Method Relying on both the chant and the positive yang energy, he cultivated assiduously for three months, but Han Li was shocked to realize that his progress was extremely slow. He had spent a great deal of effort and yet he was rewarded with one small thread of cool energy inside of his body. The energy was so infinitesimal that he could barely notice that it was there. If he hadn't checked his body carefully for results, he would not have noticed the strand of energy. Could this be the rumored true chi the instructors had talked about? Han Li suddenly came to this realization. The other disciples cultivating the positive yang energy had told him that there was a distinct flow of warm energy and qi being generated within their bodies. However, the thread of energy in Han Li's body was extremely cold, completely opposite from the energy gained from cultivating positive yang energy. Looking at the results, it was obvious Han Li was very far behind the other disciples. Those who used the true qi from the positive yang energy cultivation were able to punch a fist-sized hole through a small tree trunk and leap three meters into the air. Han Li, however, after circulating the strange qi in his body, felt practically no different from his normal state. The only difference he could tell was that his spirit was more vigorous and his appetite was even more ravenous than before he came to the mountain. But what use was that? Seeing that the other children on the mountains were gaining ridiculous power, Han Li couldn't help but feel dejected. After realizing that he had barely made any progress, Han Li had nearly given up on his several months of hard work. He thought that with such a huge gap between himself and the others, he would not have a chance to catch up to the other children in the remaining amount of time before Dr. Mo's test and successfully pass it. It would be better to plan for his trip back home instead. Incidentally, Han Li one day came across the cultivating Zhang Tai and realized something. Ever since Zhang Tai had started his cultivation with this mysterious oracular formula chant, his body showed no changes at all. There was no effect, not even a small amount of true qi could be seen. Knowing that he had at least succeeded in forming one strand of true qi, Han Li regained the confidence he had thrown away earlier. With the remaining amount of time, he furiously tried to cultivate the oracular chant. He worked even harder than before, training like a madman. Han Li began to use every single second to meditate and cultivate. Even when he was sleeping, he kept his body upright in a meditative position in hopes of having even a slight breakthrough. Of course, this intensive training method could not be maintained for longer than a few days. If he strained himself past his limit, his lack of sleep would make him unable to efficiently cultivate. What puzzled Han Li the most was that after Dr. Mo imparted the oracular chant to the two of them, he stopped interacting with them. Even their questions on cultivation had been ignored by him as if he did not even notice their existence. Every day, Dr. Mo would bring out the book with the three black characters written on the back cover and study it, staring intently as if the lines of text outlined the image of a beautiful woman and the cover was made of pure gold. At the beginning, Han Li and Zhang Tai thought that Dr. Mo no longer wanted to be a medical doctor but rather was studying bitterly to pass an imperial exam. After the two children learned to read, however, they recognized the three words on the back cover, which read, Scripture of Longevity. Dr. Mo was reading a book about how to cultivate oneself to the point of extending one's lifespan. In that moment, the two children suddenly realized that Dr. Mo wasn't trying to pass the imperial exam, he was trying to live thousands of years like a river turtle. TL. Turtles were thought to be able to live for thousands of years. Chapter 8. Entering the Sect as a Disciple You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 8. Entering the Sect as a Disciple After half a year of relentless cultivation, Han Li was finally going to take Dr. Mo's test. 
Zhang Tai was fidgeting as he stood close to Han Li. His behavior was nothing strange. Zhang Tai had told Han Li that for the past six months, he had made no progress on the oracular chant given to them by Dr. Mo. Han Li knew that Zhang Tai's efforts in cultivating the oracular chant were no less intense than his own. Although Zhang Tai was unlike Han Li, who practiced like a madman, the efforts he expended could still be considered conscientious and diligent. Strangely, the oracular chant seemed to be useless to Zhang Tai. No matter how much effort he put in, he wasn't able to produce even the slightest amount of effects. It seems like Zhang Tai would never successfully cultivate the oracular chant. Han Li's mind was unsettled. He knew that Zhang Tai would probably fail the test. Even though Han Li was slightly successful in learning the oracular chant, he was not stronger than Zhang Tai in any way, so there was a high chance of both of them failing Dr. Mo's test. Fearing the worst, Han Li assiduously cultivated. By the time of the exam, the strange energy flowing in his body had increased by a little. If the energy was as thin as a strand of hair in the past, it was now slightly thicker, resembling a thread of cotton. Even so, this did not reassure Han Li, who feared he might not pass Dr. Mo's test. Are you guys prepared? Let me take a look at the fruits of your cultivation. Dr. Mo squinted his eyes as he sat and coldly stared at the two of them. We are ready. Han Li and Zhang Tai could only put forth a bold face and agree. Dr. Mo slowly rose from his chair and stood up. He put the book that always seemed to be nearby down on the table. Extend your hand, circulate your chi for me to see. Dr. Mo held Zhang Tai's right wrist with one hand and placed his other hand on top of Zhang Tai's dantian. After the time it took to brew a cup of tea, Dr. Mo retracted his hands and closely evaluated Zhang Tai. Zhang Tai's face was flushed as he nervously put his hands behind his back, lowering his head and not daring to look Dr. Mo in the eye. He knew Dr. Mo had most certainly discovered that he made no progress in the oracular chant and would probably punish him to teach the two of them a lesson. It's your turn. To their surprise, Dr. Mo didn't even show the slightest indication that he would punish Zhang Tai. Some slight hints of disappointment flashing past Dr. Mo's eyes were the only reactions Dr. Mo had. After examining Zhang Tai, he turned to Han Li and motioned for him to come closer. He then held Han Li's wrist and began the inspection. His touch feels just like ice. It doesn't feel like the touch of a living human, Han Li mused in his mind. The skin on Dr. Mo's hand was dried and full of calluses. As he held Han Li's hand, Han Li could feel slight waves of sharp pain. Perhaps it was because the external interference agitated the energy within Han Li's body but the strange flow of energy actually started to circulate by itself. It flowed through his meridians and energy channels, past all his acupoints from his dantian to his head, and flowed to his four limbs. It completed a full cycle before flowing back to his dantian. The moment the strange flow of energy circulated throughout his entire body, Han Li's pain from Dr. Mo's touch immediately dissipated. AI Dr. Mo involuntarily let out a sound of surprise, it appeared that he had discovered the strange flow of energy in Han Li's body. Quick, circulate your energy according to that chant that I taught you once again. Although Dr. Mo tried his best to suppress his elation, traces of madness and excitement still flashed through his eyes, causing Han Li to be secretly alarmed. Slowly, slowly dot let me take a good look. Dr. Mo added as his usually cold tone of voice became rushed, placing his other hand on Han Li's dantian. Han Li could feel both of Dr. Mo's hand tremble slightly. As Han Li circulated the strange energy, Dr. Mo became quite agitated. Not bad. Not bad. This feeling that this is the feeling that I wanted. I'm not wrong, I'm not mistaken. Ha ha ha. Dr. Mo after a thorough examination, could no longer hold back and started laughing maniacally, both his hands tightly clutched on Han Li's shoulder. Even his normally squinty eyes enlarged as they intensely stared at Han Li. It was as if he had seen a rare and valuable treasure, his eyes flashing with faint traces of madness. 
Han Li's ears were ringing from Dr. Mo's unceasing laughter and he felt slight pain on his shoulder. Seeing the madness in Dr. Mo's eyes, Han Li could not help but feel terror in his heart. Good, very good. From the expression on Han Li's face, Dr. Mo could tell that he was terrified. Only then did Dr. Mo realize that he had been overeager, thus, he controlled himself and regained his composure. In the future, you must work as hard as you're working right now. From this day onwards, you will be promoted to my personal disciple. After saying that, Dr. Mo released his tight grip on Han Li's shoulder and proceeded to pat him in encouragement. Dr. Mo regained his usual calm look almost as if his loss of control had never happened. But from his occasional glances at Han Li, one could tell that he was still tremendously excited. As for you. Dr. Mo finally shifted his gaze onto Zhang Tai. Zhang Tai was thunderstruck by the events that unfolded earlier. Seeing that Dr. Mo shifted the topic of conversation to him, Zhang Tai awoke from his daze with a start. Just thinking that he failed the assessment and would be asked to leave the mountain caused traces of bitterness to appear on Zhang Tai's face as he looked at Dr. Mo. Your talent is questionable. Despite such a long period of time, you still could not produce even a small trace of energy. Accepting you as my personal disciple would be too much of a stretch. Dr. Mo repeatedly shook his head. Zhang Tai's heart fell down to the bottom of an abyss after seeing Dr. Mo shaking his head. But suddenly, Dr. Mo seemed to have thought of something interesting, as he gazed at Zhang Tai with a bizarre expression in his eyes. Looking at your bone structure, I may have a suitable technique for you. I just wonder if you are willing to learn from me. Dr. Mo's sudden shift in conversation caught everyone by surprise. It was as if Dr. Mo wanted to allow Zhang Tai to pass the test. The moment Zhang Tai heard Dr. Mo, how could he reject the offer? He immediately gave his consent and said that he would be willing to learn from Dr. Mo. Excellent. The two of you can depart first. Tomorrow, I will hand you both new cultivation techniques. It could be seen that Dr. Mo's current spirits were excellent. Han Li and Zhang Tai both looked at each other and felt that today's test had been full of twists and turns. After all, both of them actually passed, leaving them both satisfied and pleased. Chapter 9 Way of the Armored Elephant You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Way of the Armored Elephant Looking back, Han Li couldn't help but give a knowing smile. In the half year that Han Li spent with Zhang Tai, because their personalities matched well with each other, the two had naturally become very close friends. Han Li slowly stood from his crossed-legged position and rubbed his calves. After sitting in the crossed-legged position and meditating for a long time, his legs had become numb, and even some of his bloodstreams felt clogged. After kneading them for some time, his legs returned back to their normal state. Standing up, Han Li dusted himself in his usual custom before exiting the stone chamber. Turning his head back to look at the stone chamber used for cultivation, Han Li couldn't help but sneer at himself. This entire chamber was made of solid granite while the doors were made of a giant piece of crocidolite. If a normal human wanted to break into this room, he or she would need to spend at least three hours hacking at the doors with an enormous axe. TL Crocidolite https forward slash forward slash n dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash rebekite in the seven mysteries sect only the sect leader elders and division heads were allowed to use this type of silent cultivation chamber not even inner disciples were allowed to use them as they pleased this cultivation chamber was created for those practicing profound cultivation techniques to guard their practice against any external disruption and in order to prevent qigong deviation Han Li didn't know what methods Dr. Mo had used, but the sect somehow granted him the usage of his own personal cultivation stone chamber, built into the side of the cliff of the God Hand Valley. TL Qigong deviation is when cultivation goes awry. After the cultivation chamber was built, Dr. Mo had assigned it for Han Li's sole use. Seeing such a gift, Han Li couldn't help but feel humbled by Dr. Mo's benevolence. Dr. Mo's treatment of Han Li was perhaps too good to be true. 
Ever since Hanley had become his official apprentice, Dr. Emo had personally dipped into his own supply of herbs for Hanley to consume. Not only that, Dr. Emo also created an unknown medicinal bath for him to soak his body in. Hanley didn't know what types of herbs were being used, but as he watched Dr. carefully refine those herbs, his normally impassive face revealed a hint of reluctance. Even Hanley could figure out that these herbs were extremely valuable. Clearly, these benefits were extremely useful to him, causing Han Li's cultivation speed to increase several fold. Han Li had recently succeeded in mastering the first layer of the mysterious formula chant imparted to him by Dr. Emo. During his process of breaking through, his meridians had nearly ruptured several times and he had suffered from some moderate internal injuries. But thanks to Dr. Mo's expertise in the healing arts, the injuries to his meridians were easily repaired, and with the aid of the medicinal herbs, Hanli did not suffer from any serious, permanent damage. Every time Hanli was even slightly injured, Dr. Mo would become even more worried than Hanli himself. This worry manifested itself the entire time he treated Hanli, making Dr. Mo very tense. It was only when Han Li's injuries began recovering that he let out a sigh of relief. Dr. Mo's concern went far beyond that of a normal relationship between master and disciple and caused Han Li to feel a little uneasy about the situation. If it were not for his third uncle or the fact that no one ever walked out from these valleys, Han Li would have thought that Dr. Mo was actually his long-lost relative based on the attention that he had been showing to Han Li. TL the author did not make it clear how Han Li's third uncle prevented him from thinking this. Walking out of the cultivation chamber, Han Li lazily stretched his body and walked away from the cliff. After he had become an official disciple, Han Li and Zhang Tai moved from their original quarters into their own personal house. As he passed by Zhang Tai's room, Han Li shot a glance inside. As it turns out, Zhang Tai wasn't inside. Hanli thought that he was probably by the Crimson Water Peaks waterfall, cultivating his new martial arts technique. After the examination, Dr. Mo instructed Hanli to continue practicing the oracular formula chant and refused to teach him any martial arts. However, in an attempt to pacify Hanli, Dr. Mo personally instructed Hanli in the art of healing without holding anything back. Whenever Hanli had a question about medicine, Dr. Mo would answer right away, even going as far as allowing Hanli to look through the various books in Dr. Mo's library to find an answer to his question. As for Zhang Tai, Dr. Mo fulfilled his previous promise and imparted a set of martial arts to him. The martial arts Zhang Tai practiced was extremely peculiar. According to Dr. Mo, it was an extremely obscure branch of martial arts named the Way of the Armored Elephant. Even the name of this particular martial art was rarely heard of, let alone the existence of practitioners who actually cultivated it. It differed from the martial arts of regular practitioners in Jiang Hu. Generally, the progression of cultivation for normal martial arts ranged from easy to difficult. As the level increased, so would the difficulty. Thus, the higher the level, the more effort it would take for one to achieve a breakthrough. Zhang Tai's particular martial arts style was divided into nine layers, with the initial three layers being the easiest to cultivate, following the same principle as normal martial arts. However, starting from the fourth layer, the difficulty of breaking through was increased to a monstrous level in addition to suffering the excruciating backlash caused by practicing the way of the armored elephant. Many cultivators of this set of martial arts could not bear such excruciating pain and would stop their progression at the fourth level. Not to mention the fifth level nor the sixth level, the excruciating pain would only increase with each level. TL. Jiang Hu equals world of martial artists, after breaking through from the sixth layer into the seventh, there would be no further bottlenecks, and cultivation would be much smoother. The only drawback was that the cultivator would need to suffer from monthly bouts of intense pain. This intimidated many people who desired to cultivate the way of the armored elephant. This particular branch of martial arts was slowly dying out. This martial arts style was very peculiar. When it reached a high enough level, its strength would become truly astounding. It was said that those who reached the ninth layer had bodies as tough as gemstones. 
they were impervious to all weapons, even fire and water. Even palm strike, fist techniques, and legendary swords and sabers wouldn't be able to injure them. But what made people most envious was that after cultivating this branch of martial art, practitioners would gain the tremendous strength of an elephant. After reaching a high enough level, their strength would be limitless. They were capable of catching live wolves and ripping tigers apart, as well as other unparalleled feats. Those who had heard of this style both feared and adored it. Other than the creator of this martial art, there was no other individual who had managed to cultivate it to the ninth layer. Legend has it that the creator of this martial art was born without the sense of pain. That was the reason why he was able to create such a perverse martial art and execute it to its greatest potential. Although Dr. Amo had explained the benefits and consequences in its entirety to Zhang Tai, Zhang Tai had no concerns about the harm it could bring to his body. He coveted the strength the way of the armored elephant could bring him and promised right away to cultivate in this style of martial arts. Without even looking for another style suitable to him, Zhang Tai had already reached the peak of the first layer in two months. In order to break through the first layer of the way of the armored elephant, Dr. Mo had suggested that every afternoon, Zhang Tai should go to the Crimson Water Peaks waterfall and cultivate under the impact of the surging waters. According to Zhang Tai, this method really did have a godly effect. The difference between the peak of the first layer to the second layer was only paper thin, and as long as he worked a little harder, he would break through the bottleneck with relative ease. Chapter 10 Mysterious Bottle You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 Mysterious Bottle Han Li slowly followed the path from the God Hand Valley out of force of habit. His steps automatically carried him towards the Crimson Water Peak. He did not have anything important to do at the moment, and as such, he followed his normal schedule and visited Zhang Tai, who was training at the Crimson Water Peak. Zhang Tai grimaced in pain, allowing the impact of the waterfall to temper his body as he cultivated the way of the armored elephant. Not everyone could withstand the torturous pain from cultivating this particular martial arts. Even the first layer already required one to suffer excruciating pain. To reach the ninth layer, wouldn't it require one to cultivate to the point of insanity, losing their skin in the process? Hmm, I wonder if Zhang Tai already regrets his previous decision. The excruciating torture one had to endure to practice the way of the armored elephant is impossible to imagine, Han Li thought as he walked, carelessly kicking the fallen leaves and branches that were blocking his way. Maybe after a few more days, the two of us will go and beg Dr. Mo for another martial arts skill for Zhang Tai so that he won't need to suffer from excruciating pain each time he practices. Having absorbed himself in thought trying to think of methods to allow Zhang Tai to escape from this torturous path of practice, Han Li slowly roused himself to look at his surroundings. Han Li tilted his head as he gazed at the line of trees by his side. Currently, the year was approaching the late stages of autumn. The tree's branches were all naked and devoid of leaves. Piles of sticks and dead leaves layered the small paths walking on them felt like walking on cotton. Han Li found this experience extremely comfortable. In that moment, the sounds of weapons clashing drifted over from a nearby mountain peak, as well as the many loud cheers. After hearing the noises, Han Li glanced in the direction of the mountain peak, annoyed that his good mood had been disturbed. The noise came from disciples of the Hundred Forge Division. They were training the disciples selected to join their division in the various arts of weaponry. Every time Han Li saw other sect members gathering and undergoing their training sessions, slight hints of jealousy surfaced in his heart. He wanted to wield a real weapon and demonstrate his skills as well. What a waste. After he officially became a disciple under Dr. Mo, he had been strongly forbidden from practicing such things. Dr. Mo strongly emphasized that Han Li was to devote all of his time to the nameless oracular chant. Therefore, Han Li could only stare with wide and envious eyes. Occasionally, to scratch his itch, he would borrow a few weapons from some of the other sect members he was on good terms with and practice with them. How truly useful was it to cultivate the mysterious chant? Up until now, Han Li had not seen any positive effects of his constant cultivation. 
Other disciples had already strengthened their body and mastered impressive martial art techniques. If the path of martial arts was compared to a marathon, Han Li was certain that he had remained at the starting point and hadn't advanced in the least. Even Zhang Tai, who had cultivated for two months, had some beneficial changes to show for his efforts. His skin and muscles had become tougher, and his level of strength was also noticeably higher than before. However, if Dr. Mo had not accepted Zhang Tai as an unofficial disciple, he would not have passed the unofficial disciple test two months ago. If he had not passed the test, then staying on the mountain would be impossible, let alone sending money back home. If Zhang Tai was unable to cultivate another branch of martial arts, his path would be forever sealed. On one hand, Han Li was grumbling about the unfairness of their situation. On the other hand, he was reassuring himself that since he passed Dr. Mo's test, he would not be kicked out of the Seven Mysteries sect. Han Li retracted his gaze from the other sect members, but he continued to think about Dr. Mo's irritating commands. Distracted and in low spirits, he gazed at the two lines of trees alongside the road as pangs of dejection struck him. All of a sudden, Han Li sucked in a mouthful of cool air, his facial expression turning ugly. Out of reflex, he squatted down and used both his hands to tightly clamp on the big toe of his right foot, doubling over in the grass. A sudden, painful flare dot up had caught Han Li unaware. His face became a pale white as waves of fiery pain assailed his right foot. Evidently, Han Li had accidentally kicked against an extremely hard object hidden in the piles of leaves. Han Li arched his body and used both of his hands to wrap around his foot. After he lowered his head and removed his shoes, he began to blow heavily on his injured toe, while his brain flooded with pain, he was worried that his swollen toe might have been injured to an extent that would impact his day dot to dot day activities after a long moment. Han Li craned his neck and peered downwards to that pile of leaves, trying to find the ungodly, dastardly stone that caused him to be injured. Haphazardly lying about, the fallen leaves were all the same reddish-yellow color. They obscured him from finding the target he sought. Han Li wrinkled his forehead and surveyed the ground before finding a slightly long and thick tree branch. Holding the branch, he stood up carefully. Unwilling to give up, Han Li used the branch in his hands and continued to probe piles of leaves. AI. He spotted an object the size of a fist. Han Li paused momentarily and considered the object in front of him. The culprit, the sinful object that caused injury to his great self, actually had the shape of an elongated bottle. The surface of it was stained with mud, and its original color was impossible to discern. Overall, it looked extremely commonplace. Initially, Han Li thought that this was an ordinary little bottle, but in his hands, the bottle was extraordinarily heavy, its weight vastly different from that of a normal porcelain bottle. Could this bottle be made of gold? No wonder it caused so much pain when he kicked it. But. Bottles made of gold were rarely seen. Made of gold. Han Li's interest in this bottle peaked as he temporarily forgot about the waves of pain arising from his toe. As Han Li wiped off the excess layer of mud, the original color of the bottle began to unveil itself. The bottle emanated a shiny green glow, and there were intricate black-green leaf patterns engraved on its surface. At the head of the bottle, there was a bottle cap that tightly sealed the mouth of the bottle. Hmm, could the interior be hiding something precious? Han Li placed the bottle close to his ear and gently shook the bottle, but he didn't feel any movements from the inside of the bottle. Unwilling to give up, Han Li placed his hands on the cap of the bottle and tried to pry it open. However, no matter how hard he tried, it was to no avail. Curiosity was burning in his heart, and just when he was about to use another method to open it, the pain from his foot suddenly flared up again. Damn! He had forgotten that the toe of his right leg had been injured after coming into contact with the porcelain bottle. Looking at his injury, it seemed he could not visit Zhang Tai today. Han Li decided to return to his residence and apply some medicine on his injured toe before taking his time to figure out the secrets this mysterious bottle was holding. In order to keep the bottle from being spotted by others, 
Han Li stashed it inside his robes regardless of how dirty the bottle was. Turning back, he limped step by step back to his home.